Protesters disrupt the USC game, but not to fire Alex Grinch. Angel City does the right thing for Becky Tweed, and Russell Westbrook claims that he would have been okay playing with the Utah Jazz instead of the Clippers. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and start for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is October 29th, 2023. It is an absolutely crisp yet brilliant looking morning in Salt Lake City. It's also Sunday. Feel free to say hi to the Lord and thank him for all the good things in your life if you believe as I do. Like LA Sports, such a blessing. If you like being in the know about LA Sports, click the clack the like button, click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell, hit that. It'll let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist and by all means comment. Comment on the glory of L.A. sports if you have the chance. So before we go through the news and notes and look at the scoreboard, I tell you, everybody loves to talk about points. Everybody loves to talk about bombs and big runs. What about defense? UCLA's defense sacked Colorado's quarterback seven times Saturday. Two of them by Leatu Leitu. There was never really any doubt. Number 23, UCLA, 28. Colorado 16. We'll talk more about that game in a moment. The Trojans, meanwhile, needed three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Marshawn Lloyd rushed for 115 yards and two touchdowns. Caleb Williams passes for two touchdowns, rushes for two more. And yet the 24th ranked USC Trojans edged California 50 to 49. Madness up in Berkeley. Meanwhile, Drew Doughty scored his fourth goal of the year, but the Kings fell in a shootout to the Las Vegas Golden Knights 4-3, and LAFC had a brace from both Dennis Buwanga and Ryan Hollingshead to overwhelm Vancouver 5-2. This was in the first round of MLS Cup playoffs, a best-of-three series. They lead the series 1-0. Game 2 takes place in Vancouver on November 5th. Meanwhile, today, the Rams are in Dallas at 10 a.m. Matthew Stafford returns to his native Texas with seven touchdowns and six interceptions. Chicago is going to be playing the Chargers at 520 on Sunday Night Football. Also, in the NBA, the Lakers are at Sacramento at 6. San Antonio is at the Clippers at 6. Terrence Mann has been ruled out for the Clippers. He has a left ankle sprain. But let's get to the news. A dozen or so people rushed the field prior to the USC Cal game. Social media immediately jumped to what they thought was the obvious conclusion. Oh, these fair-minded civic tids. These kids, they, they absolutely wanted a ceasefire over the Middle East with Israel and Hamas. Yeah, that's it. That's what all the kids want. Wrong. Wrong. ESPN and the Orange County Register wound up reporting that it was due to a, a professor who got suspended for stalking another employee. Stalking, as in hundreds of phone calls a night, standing outside your window, staring in, dead bunny in the crock pot, that kind of stuff. Yeah, let's keep her. Let's keep her teaching the next generation viva la resistance, right? Come to Berkeley, come to Berkeley where even getting a restraining order should not stop you from free love. Am I right, people? So it was just kind of funny to me. I mean, I understand why people would have thought it had to do with the Middle East, but if you really take a step back and look at NoCal, I mean, we have our problems in SoCal, totally understand that. But if you look at NoCal, if you even do so much as hold a fly swatter up there, you'll get surrounded by animal rights activists who demand that you get dragged off to the UN as a war criminal. So yeah, they'll protest anything up there. That's what they live for. The funny thing about it is that they thought they were going to get noticed. That game was on the Pac-12 network. Nobody was watching, guys. But I have to tell you, um, I do appreciate the protest there up in Cal because it made USC look absolutely normal and even keeled by comparison. I mean, for example, the, uh, the Orange County Register, they asked Lincoln Riley if he was going to coach before the game. Yes, he did. 
Did you notice how many pundits were claiming that Caleb Williams was going to quit for the rest of the year? He was there. USC looks like a model of stability compared to Cal, and that's saying something for the, for the Golden Bears. So now uh, we can add a freshman, a freshman quarterback who is smarter than Alex Grinch. Through the course of the year, we've been listing quarterbacks who have no business being on the field who outfoxed the USC defensive coordinator. That is the big thing that we learned from Saturday's game. Cal quarterback Fernando Man Mendoza passed for 292 yards and two touchdowns. A freshman drops 49 points on Alex Grinch. And we've been talking about it again since the bowl games of last season, that once USC or UCLA decides to play defense, they're going to be the scarier team. USC decided to stick with Grinch. Now you can add Mendoza to this growing list of scrubs and neophyte quarterbacks who punked him. We had a third string quarterback over in Utah, Bryson Barnes with three touchdowns. Arizona backup, Noah Fafita, five touchdowns. Arizona third string quarterback, Drew Pine, 28 points. Everybody gets their chance to punk Alex Grinch. It's madness. The question is not whether Alex Grinch sucks. The question is the intensity of the sucking. But that's what we learned up in Berkeley this weekend, some of which had to do with the actual football game. As for UCLA, uh, this was a game where I thought we actually might have learned more about Colorado's football program than the Bruins. And by the way, from the Bruins' perspective, that's great. Hear me out. For example, Chip Kelly tried to add some drama. He tried to hoodwink us. Oh, we don't know who our starting quarterback is going to be. But the thing with Ethan Garbers, he might not be the so-called sexy pick. He might not be the exciting pick, but he knows the offense. And as a result, again, the stability that you get with solid defense. Did you ever really think that UCLA was really going to be threatened by Colorado? Of course not. I sure didn't. So the way I looked at that was UCLA's defense completely holds down the other team while their offense eventually gets the motor running, puts the points up on the board, and with Colorado completely held down, they had no chance. None. So I'm very, if I'm a Bruins fan, I'm very happy about that. Whenever the Bruins don't have the ball, you are perfectly willing to go to a concession line because you know damn well that the other team is hard, is, has a very little chance of scoring. That's what good defense does. It's very calming. It makes your experience at the stadium or on your couch a lot easier. I mean, USC, again, they dropped, they, they dropped 50 points and they still barely beat a freshman quarterback. UCLA went out there and slapped around one of the most newsworthy programs in the nation right now. They slapped them around. Now, by the way, side note, I mentioned we learned more about Colorado than what we learned about UCLA. What we learned about Colorado is that they have 53 people that came in through the transfer portal. And just because you acquire all this talent, you can't take five of them and automatically build, a def build an offensive line. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. In what else does a girl have to do to get a promotion around here news? Angel City FC removed the interim tag from Becky Tweed's title, making her the permanent coach. This, frankly, I have to be honest, I don't know as much about women's soccer as I do a lot of other sports. I just know the fundamentals. And the fundamentals to me suggest that this is the correct call, right? Becky Tweed replaced Freya Coombe when Coombe was running the show. They were struggling out of the gate, fired her, bring in Tweed, and then all of a sudden, Angel City goes on this tremendous summer months-long run to get into the NWSL playoffs. She absolutely earned the gig. I don't know of that many women soccer coaches, and therefore, I can't really tell you who would have been an elite signing. 
but the players respond to Becky Tweed. Absolutely. The Clippers' Russell Westbrook told the LA Times he, quote, absolutely, unquote, considered playing for the Utah Jazz when the Lakers traded him at last year's trading deadline. Now, let's just cut it to the honest part, right? Westbrook spent 12 days as a member of the Jazz, but in those 12 days, he never set foot in Utah. Okay? The first time he set foot in Utah after being sent to the Clippers from the, from the Jazz was Friday night. So look, I don't buy this. The thing I will say, he's honest about part of it. Westbrook knew the coach from Utah. They worked it out. They hugged it out, at least on Zoom. They still like each other. But uh, sitting at the end of the bench in Salt Lake City, as opposed to starting with the Clippers, what do you think? You know, buy out his contract so that Russell Westbrook gets this massive $48 million or, or however tens of millions of dollars he got or sitting on the end of the bench over in Salt Lake City. Let's have common sense be our guide, folks. Former Dodgers manager Don Mattingly is reportedly in the running for a vacant job with the Toronto Blue Jays. And by the way, he's in the running for the job with the Houston Astros. How many former Dodgers do these cheating, slobbering rats need to have in their coaching ranks, right? Just doing it with Dusty Baker wasn't enough? Just wondering. You uh, might have noticed on the Lakers that despite having a terrific offseason, both in summer league and, and training camp, that Max Christie has not been getting a lot of playing time. And Darvin Ham said that there's a reason for that. Darvin Ham has been giving that time to Cam Reddish. Uh, Cam has more games under, uh, quote from Ham, Cam has more games under his belt, his size, athleticism, unquote. Reddish, by the way, has also been tasked to D up on Jamal Murray and Kevin Durant. And that's kind of a big hint. We all appreciated what Max Christie did in the offseason. He sure as hell isn't ready to go take on Kevin Durant and Jamal Murray on the defensive end of the floor. Let's be honest with ourselves. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Are you, in fact, pro-stalker when it comes down to protesting? In terms of USC, are you breathing a little bit of relief over a win? Or are you just like, this is more of the same garbage? Talk to me about defense over at UCLA. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.